What's up, Misfit Nation? Welcome to another episode of the Misfit Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, Matt the Misfit. Tonight, we're going to go over Extreme Rules for 2022. Uh, this show was up and down. It was all right. It was not the best Extreme Rules show, but it was far better than what the fuck they did last year. That shit was terrible. The talking point tonight, the return of the man himself, Bray Wyatt, is back. He was revealed, as everyone kind of figured at that point, as the White Rabbit. We're going to talk about that and a lot more. So what I want you guys to do here is hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification, the like button, comment down below about what your favorite uh, uh, part of tonight's show was, whether it being Ray White's amazing return, the, the I Quit match between Balor and Edge, the Fight Pit match, uh, Cross and then and Drew, the women's title, two both women's title matches, the opening match between the Braun Brutes and Imperium, all that good jazz. Also follow the social media at Misfit Russell TV. All that good stuff. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about Bray Wyatt's return. For weeks, we had seen these white rabbit uh, teases playing throughout Raw, SmackDown. At live events, we have the, the, the vignettes, the QR codes, the, the incredible like stuff that went into this. And it culminated at the end of the show following uh, Matt Riddle and Seth Rollins. So, how this is going to happen, how this happened here, uh, Bray Wyatt, let's talk about this. So, uh, so Matt Riddle is getting up on, on going up to the ring or going leaving basically up up the ramp lights go out people lose their mind they're unsure they're, they're they're excited but they're also unsure we hear the we basically hear bray white's voice singing he's got the whole world in his hands and each shot we see life-size versions of the characters from the firefly funhouse we've seen huskus the pig mercy the buzzard uh, Ramblin' Rabbit, uh, uh, Abby the Witch, and we've seen somebody dressed up as the Fiend. Uh, Jason Baker, shout out to him. He did those uh, costumes and those designs and stuff. Shout out to him throughout that whole thing. Uh, then we go to the Titan Tron, and we see uh, the Firefly Funhouse in shambles after... Uh, after a whole year of not being touched since uh, April of 2021, and it's le- and it looks abandoned as much of an abandoned place it is, with a with a creepy version of the Firefly Funhouse, like a like a distorted version of that being played, and then we've seen this this uh, static video, a staticky video playing, and it's this 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 looks like well, look to me like the mask. From the phone call movie, uh, and question was asked with a sort of voice, "Who killed the world?" We did, not you did. It's we did. We, I'm assuming, is fireflies. Laugh, uh, creepy laughter. Uh, then we, then we see this pretty looking um, door, and I. This is my theory about the door. I think that's the opposite side of the Firefly Funhouse door. I think that wall that we saw with the door is the, on the other side of that door, is the Firefly Funhouse. The door opens, it looks like it was kicked down. You see this, this light and, and the puff of smoke. Uh, light goes out. We see a lantern, a dude holding a lantern. Uh, crowd loses the shit. Holy shit, bre- chance start breaking out. Uh, it's the it's the dude the, from the video takes off his mask and it's Bray fucking Wyatt Wyndham Rotunda. I am so so happy for this man. Uh, with all the shit that he went through with Vince McMahon, uh, Triple H has brought back Bray Wyatt in probably the most epic way. In, like in the past couple of years. Like I said this last night on SmackDown during the SmackDown review. This is one of the most creative ways to bring someone back that I've ever seen. 
there was there there was and what's funny enough and a lot of people didn't mention this but uh for extreme rules the night uh on the outside there was white a white rabbit a few white rabbit bunnies outside handing out crossword puzzles and and uh, and uh, i guess a, a flyer that said uh all, abandon all hope you who enters here and and stuff i believe that was what the what the crossword said uh there was i believe there was a there was a qr code on the bathroom stall there was also a qr code in the arena somewhere i believe in the ceiling somewhere all this is interesting and amazing stuff as a fan even though i knew it was happening i knew it was going to happen just watching it happen and unfold was was incredible as a fan of professional wrestling as a fan of the wwe as a fan of wrestling in general this was one of the coolest things i had ever seen bray wyatt took to social media uh an hour or so after uh that happened a fan t- uh, tweeted him uh basically saying so uh uh wayne uh, bump ass i tweeted out my daughter stayed up all night for uh, Bray Wyatt and wasn't disappointed. Uh, welcome back at Wyndham Six and Bray Wyatt underneath said, "This is why I missed you to all of you." And it's true, we Bray Wyatt has been. We've missed this dude. Like this is like the reaction, the pop that man got, and I tweeted out. And what I tweeted out earlier to Bray was that reaction from the, that uh, the crowd tonight must have made you feel really good inside because, like I said, he went through a lot uh, last year. Or, yeah, last year, uh, obviously, with him being released and him being told, being made fun of by the former boss in charge at, at the time, uh, and then you, and then uh, at the end of twenty twenty. Losing one of his best friends and Brody Lee, I uh, still somewhat grieving from that. I'm assuming. Um, and even before that, the 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 stuff with losing to the John Cena at WrestleMania 30, which he shouldn't have happened, and losing that feud completely, uh, going on a downward spiral from there, never recovered. Uh, then the whole stuff with uh the 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 WrestleMania 33 match and Randy Orton with the WWE Championship. He should have. He he had a he uh, when uh, when he won the title, people loved it, and then they ruined it by just having maggots on the damn ring and just one RKO. The match is over, and Randy Orton's the champion, and he moves on to fucking Jinder Mahal, and then because of course we have to ruin uh, a person who deserved the fucking title, who earned it, to somebody who didn't deserve it and who didn't earn it. And then let's see. And then we went to the whole the leader of worlds thing with with uh, uh, Matt Hardy, which was terrible shit. I mean, the, I mean the the attempt at the final deletion match was okay, but everything else was just shit. Um, um, he tried with the, with the Undertaker stuff in 2015. Uh, I still think he should beat Undertaker. Uh, that I don't care if it was Undertaker's first uh, comeback match, first match since WrestleMania 30, since the league of the streak. I don't care. Um, uh, having The Rock bury the Wyatt family. Uh, then the next side getting ready to do a babyface run as the cult leader character. And then getting injured and then losing that spot. And just start feeding with the new... I, look, I love the New Day, but they've started feeding with the New Day and... No one cared. Uh, and then he went away for a while. Like a very long while. Came back with this Firefly Funhouse gimmick that got over so quickly. The Fiend thing was the most talked about. Th- uh, the Fiend's debut at SummerSlam was the most talked about thing that year. That uh, that year SummerSlam. Uh, and then we would go to the shit that kind of didn't help at all was the whole uh, you know hell in a cell shit with rollins and 
and then the whole putting the title on him when he shouldn't have had the title yet in the first place, uh, then being buried by fucking Goldberg, never recovering from that. Sure, he had a great fight. That whole thing with the Firefly Funhouse match with Cena was pretty cool. But that was kind of it. I mean, first few months of the of the Fiend Alexa Bliss thing was, was pretty fun. I enjoyed it for first few months, and then it got really stupid when he started feuding with Randy Orton. And then him losing at WrestleMania for no reason again to Randy Orton. In the same fucking state who which is i mean this dude creatively was fucking ruined by vince mcmahon and his and and kevin dunn and bruce bitchard and all that shit uh my one of my favorite debuts was the original wyatt family debut in july of 2013 when they beat up kane and all of that build up to the, the the wyatts coming out was Incredible stuff. And then they ruined it. Well, Vince ruined it. Triple H is like, you know, it's like, yeah, that's not going to happen under my watch. We're going to bring him back and we're going to, we're going to use him correctly. Cause now, and they just hired Rob fee, the, the guy who's, who's friends with Bray Wyatt. And now is a, a creative director, a direct, I believe he's the director of creative long-term storytelling. I'm assuming that's what it is. He's a former, he does stuff for horror. He did stuff for more Marvel and all that stuff. And if this is the glimpse, first glimpse of what we've, what we're going to get with Rob B working with Bray Wyatt and who may have more creative freedom than he did with Vince McMahon. I'm excited. So we don't know, because again, we don't know what Brandy's on. He may, if I'm doing it, don't have him affiliated with either brand. Like his first promo, his first promo and is going to be incredible. I cannot wait for how a, a almost creatively free uh, promo by Bray Wyatt is done without Vince McMahon throwing in lines like you know, you know, I'm a god and fucking I'm a, I'm a spooky man and some stupid ass shit like that. But Bray Wyatt is back. I'm excited to see where that goes. It's going to be one of the coolest things ever. That was one of the most coolest. Di- like, this year's returns was, like, if I had to pick between Cody Rhodes and uh, Bray Wyatt, I may go with Bray Wyatt. I'm, I'm not saying that because of the uh, recency bias, but I feel like just how they pulled it off, just the level of creativity that went into the marketing of this, the, the everything. Like last night, SmackDown, they had Triple H actually just show the QR code on the microphone. They had, um, uh, the white the white rabbit bunny just walking creepily walking through the crowd on SmackDown. Um, now. now now you're wondering what's what's this going to be with? Is this like a new thing with the Y six? Is this going to be the, a faction? Maybe who knows? Um, I originally thought of it like of. So I originally thought of this, and I was talking to my friend Patrick about this, and I saw it as him shedding the fiend gimmick completely. That's what I think thought about it as, but I could be wrong. But I'm excited to see where it goes. They just got to keep that intensity going man if you think if you thought philadelphia was going to be as hyped for bray wyatt wait until we get to tomorrow night or not tomorrow night uh on uh, why well, it's going to be well, me recording this is going to be on saturday but you're going to see this on sunday and i'm going to see it say it's tomorrow night smackdown is going to be fucking insane and i'm excited I'm, I'm here for it I am here for it. I am here for it. So like I said, we're going to go through the rest of the show here. Uh, the show itself was not that bad, but it wasn't that good. Uh, there's two matches that were iffy. That being 
Uh, the uh, women's, uh, the Extreme Rules match for the SmackDown Women's title and the strap match was all right. Nothing too extreme about those either matches. We do have a title change. Uh, Ronda Rousey did win the SmackDown Women's title back. I'm assuming for various reasons. Because uh, I, I think they want the title on Ronda going into WrestleMania so they can get to uh, a match that that they want to do and we know that should happen which is ronda and becky at wrestlemania but um let's talk about the first match that happened on the show which was an absolute bar burner of a match the brawling broods defeated imperium in a good old-fashioned donny brook match this match was incredible stuff these this may be one of my favorite feuds in wwe right now because like they had, like, Sheamus and Guther had two fantastic uh, IC title matches. Uh, they, a few weeks ago on SmackDown, there was a six-man tag match between the six of these. And holy shit, it was good. It was some good stuff. I think that's a six-man tag. It was either a six-man tag or a tag team match, which with, uh, the, which, which, with Dunn and Holland versus uh, 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 Vinci and uh, Kaiser. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, before the match went away, underway, we had we had the first White Rabbit actual te- little teacher of the main show. We did have one um, during the pre-show when they were talking about uh, Cross and, and Drew, which was the the promo from the White Rabbit teaser we saw at a uh, on SmackDown. Um, so that happened before the match started. The teams wasted the two teams wasted no time. They beat the shit out of each other. Uh, Butch taking uh, Giovanni Vinci to the announce table, beat him up. Uh, while Lu- Ludwig Kaiser decided to, just decided to hang in the tree tree of wool with Shalelli put in front of him. Uh, that was getting hit right, right in the neck. Luther comes in, starts chopping the hell out of people, um, because that's what he does. I would never want to take a, a Walter top in my life. Can't can't pay me a lot of money for that one. Imperium quickly takes down all their opponents to gain control. Um, Imperium begins destroying the bar at ringside. Uh, not not Seamus and Cesaro, not that bar. Just there was an actual bar at the ringside that was being destroyed because it was a, a good old fashioned Donnie Brook match, which which ends up annoying Seamus, which is kind of funny when you think about it. Uh, he tries to get uh, revenge on everything on on. Uh, he tries to get. Revenge, uh, things turning. What three? It was became, basically became a three on situ three three on one situation with Imperium and Sheamus. Uh, he sent he uh, Sheamus was into the steel steps. Butch then launched himself into the situation because Pete Dunne does not give a shit. Um, though I did hear some brutal weight chance tonight, which made me very happy. Come on, Triple H. You gotta give him that name back. He can he can keep the 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 stuff he does as Butch. Just give him that Pete name. Put the name back. That's all you really have to do. Uh, then Vin, uh, so we saw Gene uh, finally Vinci flying himself into the barricade. Oh no, no, since I believe he sends Dunn back into the barricade, uh, which breaks brute force breaks it. Uh, Sheamus then held up held up on on the bar as Gunther begins. Unloading some of those nasty chops, uh, following it up by dropping him onto the bar. Uh, it sounds weird saying dropping him onto the bar like I'm th- like I'm talking about like Cesaro's out there or something. Um, shout out to Claudio Castagnoli. Uh, Butch tries to fight back with an injury, uh to Gunther, which I cannot wait to see that rematch again. Whenever they start getting into that. Kaiser and Vinci quickly shut him down, only for Ridge Holland, who just finally decides to show up, to lift them both up and throw them in, th- or throw them back down. Which the dude, that dude is incredibly powerful. Uh, yet his momentum is immediately shut down with the boot to the face by Gunther. The Imperial bomb uh, then is hit, then then uh, is then hit on the outside to Holland, which I, which I did see that part. There were some parts of this match I did miss. Uh, I did admit, I did see that. Uh, Butch is on by himself. Pete Dunne does not give a shit. He starts just fucking 
beating his going after all of them. He quickly gets overwhelmed uh, on the top turnbuckle for Walter or Guther's chop. You're calling him Walter, I know. Habit of mine. Same thing with with uh, Butch. Doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, he gets hung up again. Like I said, with the Walter chops. There it is again. I'm just gonna keep calling him that. Uh, then tags. Then he shuts down the tag team charging. He hits, hangs him down with the tag team charging with the, to hit their stereo drop kicks. Um, Sheamus then reappears. Uh, he launches Vinci and Kaiser into the barricade, leaving him and the Intercontinental Champion uh, into the ring by themselves. Uh, uh, Gunther, which, by the way, this gets a great pop. The crowd was hot for this match. Billy, Billy was weird tonight. Like, Philly was hot for this match. A few matches uh, was massively hot for the Bray Wyatt stuff. Goon third then hits his German suplex. But Sheamus uh, responds by planting his rival with a. a Sheamus then uh, responds with planting Gunther, following uh, him, following up with his Tim B to the Bowery, which was more than ten because he just beat the fuck out of him. Uh, Holland and and uh, Butch come back out there. They start pulling, putting the boots to uh, Kaiser, or not Kaiser Gunther, while Sheamus is doing the uh, the uh, the Tim B to the Bowery. Bowery. Uh, but Giovanni Vinci breaks it up. Uh, uh, breaks up the bro kick. Oh, Sheamus hits the bro kick. Uh, Vinci breaks up uh, the pin with a splash on, on as Holland then attacks him. Yet he fights back as Butch then hits Kaiser out of the ring, only for Gunther to nail a double drop kick on both of them, which on um, both uh, Holland and Butch. Uh, James then connects with a uh, Irish curse backbreaker. Then the four league clovers locked in. This was uh, critical because last night on SmackDown, uh, he had the four league clover on him. We've seen Walter tap, but apparently it's, that's more than two taps, uh, which I've seen in, in other matches that the, that the person just taps twice, which I believe was more like a right up move to get the ropes i'm assuming anyway um or he could before uh walter could tap kaiser breaks it up by smashing a chalet across his back with butch and holland then breaking up that pinfall attempt uh the two tag teams brawled on their knees while the two leaders hit huge chops on one another uh they start regrouping kaiser takes butch out uh and uh, Vinci. Does the same to Holland, but Sheamus catches Gunther with a knee that almost gets the job done. He is pulled out of the ring. Gunther is, that is. Or no, Sheamus is pulled out of the ring, excuse me. Uh, Imperium clears the announce table, but Holland ha- stops that stops the plans as they brawl. Butch gets on top of these these barrels that these huge barrels that are just stacked up right next to the timekeeper area. He climbs in that up there like he's a cause he's a crazy some bitch. Uh, does a, a, a senton? I don't know. He hit the moon salt from the top of the barrels to clean, clear everyone out. Uh, back at the, the ring, Gunther uh, attacks Sheamus with a huge slaley, but he kicks out just in time. Brawling the brutes then hold Gunther, uh, allowing Sheamus to hit uh, hit him with the in the head with the slaley. And Butch and Holland do the same to the others outside the ring. Gunther hits Sheamus. With the huge uh, razor's edge Celtic cross through the announce table. Uh, back in the ring, Vinci is held while allowing Sheamus to hit the bro kick for the one, two, three. The brawling brutes win. Incredible match to start off the show. Um, this probably was my match of the night. We'll talk about what I think of the match of the night was uh, once we get to the rest of the show. But that was fun stuff. Gunther and Sheamus. I want these teams to do. I, I love this, like this faction warfare that's going on. We have factions galore getting going around. We have new factions coming in, like Legado del Fantasma, who debuted on SmackDown last night. We have Imperium. We have the Bloodline. We have uh, the Brawling Brutes. We have Judgment Day. Um, we also have, and we have this this uh, assuming this uh, new. We have Damage and Control. We have. 
what looks to, we got hit row with there looks to be the, the crappy maximum male models no one cares about though uh we looks to be the wyatt six maybe bray wyatt has a faction coming out coming up who knows i'm excited for all, what's going on with that uh the miss is shown backstage though because the miss has to be on this fucking show uh he's looking wants to talk to triple h because of the rumor uh wife was like put out a report earlier in the day before they released the smack uh, the lineup of the show uh had triple h listed as a baby as a non-thority we didn't see him though but he had a he had his own uh, door locker room door set up uh for the miz to be in front of later on later on the night uh, he was going to Triple H to talk about Dexter Loomis, but then he sees Gritty, because they're in, like I said, they're in uh, Philadelphia. Well, offers the Miz a shirt. Uh, he doesn't want it. Throws on the floor instead. He because this is in Miz's mind throughout the night. He thinks this is Dexter Loomis, which is hilarious stuff. We'll get to more of that in a little bit. Uh, next up, we had Liv Morgan versus Ronda Rousey for the Raw, for the Raw, not the Raw, the SmackDown Women's Championship. Three rules match. This match was not that great. <laughs> this is probably the worst match on the show. Um, I didn't really like this match at all. Um, I know people were complaining about Liv, about about the 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 spot into the turnbuckle. If I'm being honest, that move. Does not work. Doesn't matter who Liv hits it on. I think Liv should just retire that move or get or put something else in their arsenal. But we'll talk about that when we get there. Match starts. Liv Morgan goes goes like straight for her bat, but Ronda Rousey takes her down with and locks in submission moves. Um, like continually locks in submission moves. Uh, throughout the match, Ronda is is you know. Uh, toying with Liv Morgan. Most of this match was Ronda Rousey beating the hell out of Liv Morgan. Like getting this woman was getting this poor woman was getting murdered by Ronda Rousey. Um, Morgan gets out of the shadow of of the ankle lock, follows up, which was applied by Ronda. Follows that up with a knee to the face. She tries to follow that up that up with a baseball slide, but uh, Ronda pulls the apron. Uh, to Trapper, which is a move that we saw, we've seen Nikki Cross do multiple times. It's her, one of her trademarks. And then she starts unloading with punches, which leads to Morgan uh, asking for more, which is weird. It's, it's weird stuff. Uh, so, so uh, the challenger slaps her. Rhonda, Rhonda that is, slaps her, go, uh, goes to attack her, attack her with the bar. Not that bar. Um, but Morgan has a fire fire extinguisher, sprays her in the face. Uh, yet she doesn't stay on top of long. Uh, yeah, stay on top of long as Rhonda hits the Piper's pit. Uh, she goes away to check out her on her eyes. Morgan uh, he leaps off the stairs to try to attack her, only for Rhonda to swat her with, down with the bat like she was a fucking uh, just a, a batter getting ready to get home run. On the baseball that was coming towards her, brutal stuff. Um, the shot was brutal. That is not the match. Following several more shots, uh, following up with several more shots, but back in the ring, uh, the Morgan follow, uh, Morgan follow, fires back with some integrity uh, to, to drop the champion. Um. That doesn't make sense. That, that, I've read that wrong. I don't know why I have this. I have that in my notes. As, as, as Morgan uh, fires back with an integrity to drop Ronda. Uh, Morgan starts set the attack, but again, but Ronda uh, throws a judo, her judo jacket onto her, uses the black belt to whip her, which I was not expecting to hear any sound coming out of that thing. Uh, traps her against the ring post, uh, tires her up against the ring post, that is. Beats the Evelyn piss out of her with the baseball bat. Uh, throws her back into the ring. I believe she throws her back in the ring. Nope, nope. Morgan, uh, at one point, uh, you know, Morgan at one point, uh, you know, 
reverses all that stuff. And then she starts beating up Ronda Rousey. Uh, Morgan throws Ronda back into the ring. Uh, she, she, after she put, gets to the ch- uh, table, puts that into the ring. Uh, you know, uh, so Liv puts Ronda on the table that she sets up. Um, at one point, well, before before that, at one point, the, the spot with the thing that I talked about earlier didn't really connect well. Um, then Rhonda gets put on the table by Lib Morgan. Lib Morgan does the, the, the move that she did to Lacey Evans a few weeks ago on to Rhonda uh, for a two count. Rhonda then locks in the, the, the move that she was trying to beat her with at, Survivor, at SummerSlam. Uh, Multiple times, try to get uh, ro- multiple times. Morgan tried to escape, uh, try to do that pin thing, didn't work very well. Uh, and Liv Morgan passes out through the pain, uh, with a, I believe what uh, Ron, uh, Corey called a uh, a a a gut. I don't actually remember what he what he called it, but it was a submission move that he that that, that you know Liv Morgan passed out while smiling. And Ronda Rousey wins the SmackDown Women's Championship. This match was not that great. Um, there were spots that I, I quite enjoyed, like the table spot. Who doesn't love a good table spot? Uh, Ronda beat the hell out of her with a baseball bat while Morgan tied up. Uh, Morgan passing out while smiling was pretty cool. Um, and then we've seen uh, WWE.com's exclusive question mark, uh, quote unquote. Uh, the Morgan looks depressed. Looks like she's going to turn heel. Maybe she'll join Bray Wyatt. Well, you know what? I wouldn't mind it. Uh, who knows? But that's how that match happened. It was all right. Nothing. It was, yeah, it was not that good of a match anyways. Uh, speaking of a match that wasn't, was okay, but not the best. Uh, Drew McIntyre, uh, our Karen Cross defeated Drew McIntyre in a strap match. Match only went 12 minutes long. It was he 12 minutes or uh, 10 minutes long. Um, Cross didn't want to put the strap on. Mind games at first. Um, Cross has this this distinct style that he does, which is the slow, methodical, almost Undertaker, Kane-esque style that he just refuses to. He he'll keep it, but it's like it's 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 usually how it is. Um, so Scarlet then grabs the the strap, distracts, pulls on the strap McIntyre, and process goes to work on on Drew. Most of the match, uh, at, then at some point, uh, McIntyre finally gets the upper hand, forces the strap onto uh, Cross. They start beating the shit out of each other with the strap multiple times. You know, uh, one point he gets hit in the face with it. Um, the crowd did come alive for the for uh, you know the strap for cross beating the shit out of McIntyre with the strap. Um, uh, not uh, you know anything else. Um, cross at one point hits the uh, the doomsday Saito, but uh, McIntyre kicks out. Um, there's a point in the match where McIntyre or uh, Cross tried to go for the cross jacket, didn't get it, didn't really be able to connect it. Uh, Drew, uh, at another point, hit the the future shock DDT, which he tried to hit earlier, uh, with no with no prevail that happened, um, or no luck at what rather. Uh, Drew then kicked up, get ready to hit the the Claymore. Uh, Scarlet gets in, involved. She's like in front of uh, Drew. Drew tries to walk away. And, Scarlet just spell, uh, sprays pepper spray into the eyes of Drew McIntyre. Uh, Drew McIntyre gets hit by the cross uh and cross wins with help from Scarlet. Uh, I mean, sure, Cross gets a huge win over over a former WWE, a two-time WWE champion. No, yeah, a two-time WWE champion. I believe it's two-time WWE champion. Yeah. Uh, but it was nothing special. Um, Cross, I don't know what they're gonna. I mean, people didn't really care. People didn't really care much about it. 
So we don't know. We'll see what happens next. They're probably going to do another match in Saudi Arabia. Um, maybe. Um, and then they're probably going to move Cross on to do uh, Roman Reigns and probably lose there. So who knows? Uh, uh, we go backstage again. The Miz is showing back uh, with that stuff. He sees uh, Gritty. Uh, Gr- Gritty appears while he's on the phone, which leads to another the Miz storming away. So we'll give it. So that's, you know, here or there. And next up, we have Bianca Belair defe- uh, defeated Bailey in the Raw Women's Championship ladder match. This one match was actually a lot of fun. I did enjoy this match. Um, this was actually a lot of fun. Uh, straight away. Two women attack each other, then they head outside to get, to get a ladder. Um, Bianca Bella gets the better gear ladder, so Bailey tries to use her, use her as use hers as a weapon. The ladder that, that Bianca uh, brought into the ring, uh, which created a tug of war. Uh, Bailey sits to the out, sits to the floor on the outside. Then she but quickly stops her opponent from climbing the ladder. But uh, Bianca tried to climb the ladder to, to get this match over quickly. Then they brawl to the outside on the outside as Bel Air uh, is sent crashing into a ladder propped up in on onto the ring apron. Uh, the challenger Bailey, that is, follows up by hit, uh, flying, uh, trying to flip Bailey on Bel Air onto it, which you know the sunset. I'm assuming it was a sunset flip power bomb or not. Uh, she lands, but she lands and then climbs on the to the. No, it wasn't sunset flip power bomb. It was the um. It's the springboard thing the that they do where they like they, they fall backwards and and do the face classic face bump into the turnbuckle thing. Uh, Belair you know, glitch, like grabs onto it, starts climbing the ladder to get up into the ring. Bailey stops that, uh, but she jumps down. Uh, Bianca does, then slams Bailey into it. Uh, Belair lays down. The ladder then Bailey then drives Bailey into it, following her up with her springboard moon salt to land on her, uh, which looked nasty. Uh, just it doesn't matter. The ladders don't give. Okay, ladders don't give a damn who you are. Uh, Bailey fights back and connects with a huge sunset flip power bomb onto the ladder uh, that Belair lands on. Bailey sets up a ladder from the steps onto the barricade, which I which. Didn't look too good. It, it looked nasty to land on. Uh, Bailey went for that cactus elbow drop onto the, the wedge the ladder between the ring ape and the steps. Or not the ring ape and the steps, the barricade and the, and the ring steps. Uh, didn't look too didn't, didn't look too hot. Uh, with Bailey on the floor, uh, she you know simply kicked the uh, ladder away, which saw uh, uh, Belair spill onto the floor. Bailey then pulled out the hinge, uh, and Bailey's kneecap, which you know the kneecap, the not kneecap, the knee brace she was wearing on her surgically repaired knee. Um. Uh, she's char- so Bailey starts charging into the corner. Belair moves. Uh, Bailey his knee crashes on the turnbuckle. Follow him up with a KOD. Bailey gets to uh, Bianca gets to the top of the ladder. Out comes Eo Sky and Dakota Kai. However, Be- Belair fights them back. Uh, she manages to hit a impressive double uh, KOD. Almost, almost didn't go as the plan. Uh, Eo, the veteran that she is, was able to position herself to get back where she needed to be. Uh, good on Eo on that one. Which again looked great, before, and she had hit it quickly, or, it was, or she was going to go. She was going to end up like uh, Rick Boogs if she didn't. Uh, however, there was no time to celebrate because Bailey attacked her with the ladder. And then he sets the tries to sit up the ladder. The the I think I believe it was the, uh, part of the ladder in between the turnbuckle, which didn't go out, didn't work very well, sort of. Uh, she was able to launch her into it, and then connect the rose plant. Uh, she spills, pulls Bailey, uh, uh, she pulls Bel Air underneath the ladder, uh, tries to trap her underneath it, climbs up it. Bailey presses up and uh, from the you know pushes the ladder uh, from underneath her. Bailey f- topples onto the top rope. 
uh, falls into the top rope, that is. The two of them charge up the ladder. Bailey uses uh, Bianca's uh, braids to slam into the ladder. This part, this 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 part, I didn't like. Uh, she she no hit the ladder with her head after Bailey pulls the braids. She falls to the floor to the mat and immediately gets up like nothing happened. I didn't like that at all. This the, the ending of this match was not was not something I liked. Uh, however, ba- however Bianca uh, comes back quickly, whips her. Uh, with the braid to bring Bailey down on the ladder, following up with a shot of her own, with her, another shot with her hair. Uh, then she hit, looks for the KOD. Gra- Bailey grabs the, which is, which is this looks dumb on Bailey's part. Um, uh, grabs the letter wrong, only for uh, Bianca to hit the KOD with Bailey slamming on the ladder that she grabbed. Uh, and then Bella went up and grabbed the title to retain. Uh, another thing I didn't like about this was, uh, uh. There was no one in the, you know, Belair went to go bring in a ladder in the ring, even though, and not realizing it was already a ladder in the ring already. So that, that part I didn't really understand. But I mean, other than the, 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 the finish, I enjoyed the rest of that match, but the finish I could have done without that, that no sell, uh, from Bianca. Other than that great match. Um, like on the set on this show here, great match. That's all I have to say about that. We'll see what we we'll see what's next. They're probably going can. I mean, I don't know. They might not continue it because. Uh, well, they they might they were shenanigans. Who knows? Um, they're probably uh, because these these four women that were involved in this match tonight will probably be part of War Games, uh, next month. So who knows? Next up, we have Finn Balor and Edge. I quit match. Finn Balor def- defeats uh, Edge, uh, forcing Edge to say, I quit. Uh, this match was a little too long for me. I mean, the, ni- the last few minutes of the match was great, but I just don't like I quit matches. Uh, they they are just not my favorite. They are kind of boring, way too long. Um, it's just, I don't know. I just something about it just doesn't make me know they connect with me uh man starts edge charges on he charges the finn Balor immediately attacking him before connecting with a elbow and swinging neck breaker and to stay in control uh first part of the match was edge staying sort of in control uh uh Balor responds with an attack of his own as he begins focusing on the knee of its opponent uh which is the which is the leg that finn Balor quote unquote injured on Raw a few weeks ago. He yanked it across the second rope. Then he transitions into the figure four leg lock, which when you're working on a leg and you need a move that's gonna effectively damage a part of your leg, figure four is probably the best thing to do. With Charlotte we figure that out. She does that every now and then and she she'll do it like for one match and then she'll do it and then like next and matches he doesn't bother with it he just slaps it on anyway let's see they're near there uh balor then stops away at on edges on edge as he ta- trapped uh, inside the ring apron uh following that up with several kicks as he then slammed edge down on the announce table repeatedly uh, edge responded with by throwing balor into the ring post the, the but the momentum quickly changes with the sling blade. Uh, however, Edge steps aside with the bru- brutal uh, with steps of brutality with uh, driving Balor into the timekeeper's barricade as they began brawling through the fans. So, so this is probably uh, the only match where the crowd where crowd got involved. No, that's not true. They uh, so uh, this actually. Halfway, some part of the match in the strap match, they did uh, brawl through the the crowd, but it wasn't very long. But that did that did happen though. So they're go, they're brawling through the crowd. Edge suplexes Balor onto the floor. Edge then charges, comes charging in with a hockey stick. I don't know where he got the hockey stick from. 
Edge, I guess, because he's Canadian, because uh, he because he's Canadian. I mean, that's what they, I don't know. Um, attacking Balor with the, the hockey stick, of course. Uh, then he locks in the glass, the Glasgow uh, uh, grin on the top of the kickoff show table, which amazingly was there, and the people used it. Uh, they the, they then brought up the stairs as Balor uh, repeatedly launched Edge into the wall. Uh, into a wall only for him to respond by sending uh, Edge to respond by sending Balor into concrete hang uh, overhang. I say I almost called it out. I almost called it a hangover. I don't know why I did. The two uh, then battle. The two then battled uh, for, or fought down the stairs uh, with Balor choking him on the on the handrail. Then the two got, get back in. The, there was one point where uh, Balor was going to go for something and Balor just. And his nut sack into the, into the, into the railing, that's gotta hurt. Uh, the two get back into the ring. Balor starts using a chair to dominate the situation, uh, but uh, again, Edge refuses to say "I quit." Uh, Balor hits a Russian's leg sweep, uh, locks into locks a uh, stretch submission uh, on 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 Edge, not Finn. If Finn, Finn's not locking a submission on himself. Uh, which is transitioning into the crossface by Balor. Uh, Edge still doesn't say I quit. However, uh, Balor then gets uh, sit head first into a chair, chair shot to the head uh, that he propped up between the turnbuckles. Then he and, uh, Edge followed it up with an educa- educator, which is a weird. Ver- I I call it I call it the Edge version of the sharpshooter. <laughs> uh, Damien Priest comes out. Uh, as Ballard fixes to say, I quit. Priest comes out. Uh, Ed, but Edge to, to, he immediately takes out Priest. Uh, spears Ballard through the ropes, which he lands on Dominic in the process, and, and Priest is out there. Uh, back inside the ring, Edge looks for a spear, but Rhea Ripley pops up with handcuffs and just handcuffs uh, Edge to the ropes, uh, allowing Jackson Day to beat the ever living piss out of Edge. And for some odd reason, Rey Mysterio just had to have his music play. He could have just ran out. He didn't need to wait for his music to play. Just ran out. I don't know why. Uh, he wanted to attack Judgment Day, but uh, uh, he has started attacking Priest and Balor, but then gets laid out by his own son. This is where Michael Cole is at his best. Uh, he just loses his shit when Dominic just, just beats up Rey Mysterio and Says, damn it, that's your father, or whatever it was. Um, and they had a great, he had a great call early on in the match. We'll, we'll get to it with, with Beth Phoenix. But that was some great stuff. Uh, um, meanwhile, back into the ring, Balor was able to go back to dominating with the kendo stick. Beth Phoenix pops up, crowd pops. Uh, she unloads on Balor with the, with a weapon with the weapon, which is the kendo stick, I believe. Uh, she takes out Priest as well as Dominic, uh, while Dominic backs off. This this is what I was waiting for. Uh, Rhea gets in the ring, crowd loses it, their mind. They this is this is when the crowd starts coming back alive. They want to see this match. I want to see this match. Rhea Ripley versus versus uh, uh, Beth Phoenix. Give it to me, Triple H. Give me what I want. Insert Batista meme here. They go back and forth, brawling in the in, inside the ring. Uh, Beth Phoenix hits spear on Rhea Ripley. Then she grabs the key that Rhea Ripley that Rhea dropped. Uh, releases her, releases Edge from the handcuffs. Immediately spears Priest. Dominic wants to shake his hand. He gets his nuts kicked in by by Edge, uh, which is payback for what he did to him in Cardiff. Yet Ballard attacks him from behind only to eat three spears by Edge. Edge takes the bottom chair, uh, the bottom bar of the chair that he's been known to use but uh, and looks to use it on Balor. Rhea knocks out Beth Phoenix with brass knuckles. Uh, Edge then tries to, tries to go aid her but gets jumped by Priest. Uh, Balor with hitting the Cuda girls from three, to, three Cuda girls. Edge just refuses to quit again. So Rhea Ripley uh, goes in there, grabs the ch- two chairs to hit the concerto 
on a, on uh, Beth Phoenix, and this is where Edge says I quit, and Balor wins with the with the word I quit. This is how I well I'll get to that part in a second, uh, but and then Rhea Ripley just he, he just you know just hits the could against the concerto with Michael Cole with with an incredible line saying uh, uh Michael Cole was on his game here tonight with this match basically I don't remember exactly what he said word for word but he was on his game on, during this match um they did what exactly what uh, my uh, what I pitched or uh, not pitched predicted they would do what they were going to do uh during the prediction show on Thursday uh, which was uh, the only way that Edge was going to say I quit was uh, uh, Rhea Ripley beating up uh, Beth Phoenix and exactly what happened. The match, like I said, the match was the match was half of the match was 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 kind of too long and it's just I got bored of it. But when with the whole thing with the Judgment Day came in here and all that stuff and the Beth Phoenix stuff, that was great. That was some good stuff. So I'm assuming, if not at, at Crown Jewel, maybe at War Games, we're gonna get uh, our Survivor Series. We're gonna get a Rhea Ripley and and Finn Balor versus Edge and Beth Phoenix. Something something along those lines. That's what I'm assuming. Anyway, uh, next up, uh, we had the final backstage segment of the night, which was again Miz is outside the door of Triple H. Uh, getting ready to knock on it. Uh, mascot once again, no way's edge. He snaps, starts beating up the uh, uh, gritty, only for Dexter Loomis to appear behind him. I hit uh, the, the silence on Loomis. Our Loomis hits the silence on on the Miz, puts the Miz to sleep. He brings up. He you know pulls up uh, gritty. Gritty just kicks the shit out of out of the Miz. They walk off at length, buddies. That's how that whole night of that segment's concluded. That was actually pretty entertaining. That was funny. Um, again, hopefully by tomorrow or on roll or whatever, we're gonna find out eventually where um, this is leading and why it's happening. Who knows? Main event: Seth Rollins, Matt Riddle fight pit match with Daniel Cormier as the referee. This was actually pretty fun. I enjoyed this this match. Uh, the crowd though. Was ready to have Bray Wyatt. That, there was at some some point in this match, they started chanting, "We want Wyatt." Um, Daniel Cormier was very weird in this match. Like almost like at some points he didn't understand the rules, but then he's relaying the rule. It was very weird. Uh, Matt Riddle shows off his, uh, his experience in the cage because he's an MMA fighter. Uh, uh, early basically by running up and jumping off it with a kick, allowing. Him to take control as he's brawling down with Rollins. He starts punching uh, Rollins. He started punch. He starts punching Rollins, um, but accidentally catches the can Cormier in the face with an elbow. But he pulls off. He pulls Riddle off him, which allows Rollins to jump from behind and push him into the steel. Rollins wakes the eyes of uh, Riddle. Uh, that leads to uh, Cormier ch- checking on him. So and at this at this point, this is where uh, Michael Cole made the made the very very brilliant statement of why are you not just counting this man? Questionable uh, refereeing there. Uh, Seth pulls him away. Of course, the uh, Cormier doesn't take that kindly. He puts Rollins pushes pushes Rollins against the cage to warn him as well. While the two men then get uh, get, down, get down to business, Rollins get back down to business. Rollins uses the steel to take advantage of uh, Riddle facing across, following up with a big uh, blow to the back of the head. Rollins mocks Riddle with a couple of super kicks. Cormier, Cormier then begins to uh, count. He continues climbing the, the steel cage to uh, hit. Slightly hit a frog splash with a twist. Uh, Rollins that that is, but once again Riddle gets up. Rollins gets uh, be, so Rollins begins kicking him in the head. Uh, despite Rollins' domination, uh, Riddle pops up with an RKO out of nowhere. 
Well, Riddle's getting very comfortable with those RKOs. When Randy Orton comes back, Randy Orton's turning on Randy Orton on a Matt Riddle. This part, depending on how long Randy's going to be out, uh, we're getting Randy Orton and Matt Riddle probably at WrestleMania if if Randy's going to be back in time for that. And the two exchange slaps and strikes as Randy or as I almost call him Randy Orton. God damn it. Riddle looks for another RKO, but Rollins avoids it with hits the curb stomp. Uh, then uh, Rollins decides to climb the, sto- the the uh, climb up the steel to the platform above as he starts down, starts around to the fans, singing along to his song. Uh, but Rollins goes up to fight him as Rollins starts attack starts the attack with the Roll- with the Riddle uh, cl- uh, clinging onto the metal chain. However. He reverses into a real naked choke, which looks cool, even though but he couldn't do anything about it. Uh, which, but it's still look cool for visual uh, purposes. Uh, but the fight, but fights out, uh, and then and then slams Riddle into the steel repeatedly. Uh, Rollins then tells Cormier to shut up. He turns his back to Riddle, connecting with a buckle bomb on the steel, which, which is like much like Corey Graves, I thought was gonna. Not in the well. I was very scared there. Uh, uh, Rollins tries to throw Riddle down, but gra- but Riddle grabs the chain. Uh, the skips across. Riddle is immediately taken down with the pedigree. He then he looks. The, the, he then looks for a stomp that, but that is avoided and reverses to another beautiful RKO by uh, Matt Riddle. Uh, as Rollins falls back down to the ring, Riddle sees an opening and hits the floating bro on the top of the fight pit. And in visual form, it almost looked like like the first camera shot seemed like it almost looked like he slipped. I I know it wasn't, but that's what it visually looked like there. Uh, he crashed down onto Matt, uh, Seth Rollins. The two men got up. Rollins locks on, locks on an arm submission. Rollins tries to break out of it uh, by slamming him into the steel uh, structure several times, but Riddle never relinquishes the hold, and to the point where Riddle when then Matt Riddle forces. Uh, Seth Rollins to tap out, uh, transitioning into the triangle ho- choke hold. Matt Riddle wins. This is a, this is a fun main event. I enjoyed that. Um, like I said, as we go to the top of the ring, like I said, the whole thing with Bray Wyatt happens. Uh, and a whole thing with Bray Wyatt happens, and Bray and the show goes off the air with Bray Wyatt uh, saying to the camera, "Let me in," with the with this new Wyatt logo and the old. Uh, the old Wyatt family uh, sound effect that plays and the role. And, and that's how Extreme Rules goes off the air. Uh, so my, uh, Extreme Rules was, was a... Was a... Yeah, show. It was, it was good. It was not bad. It wasn't bad. It wasn't the best. Pay- it was far better than what happened last year for sure. Uh, but the highlight of the show... Uh, for Highlights of the show for me was... Roy White's return, the the six man tag that opened the show, uh, the women's ladder match, uh, and bits and pieces of Edge and, and Finn Balor match in the night. Uh, obviously goes to the Brawling Brutes versus Imperium. That was incredible stuff. Second best match of the night was the Raw Women's Championship match. Worst match of the night obviously goes to uh, Liv Morgan and Ronda Rousey. Uh, but moment of the night, obviously, and pop of the night original was at first Edge, and then the pop of the night immediately went to Bray Wyatt. Um, so happy he's back. Um, I'm glad that that Bray Wyatt's back. He gets to, he hopefully gets to flesh out his creative mind to Triple H, who is more open to things like you know creativity uh, and and suggestions and stuff. He's not like Vince McMahon, where he's you get a do what Vince McMahon wants and Vince McMahon only. So, but yeah, that was that was my review of Extreme Rules. Again, like I said, not a bad show. Not a, it was a decent show. Would I go back and watch it? I would go back and watch it for the opening match and the the ladder match, and obviously for Bray Wyatt's return. The main event was also pretty good too. Uh, I would probably put that as my third best match on the night. Actually, you know what? Actually, I would probably put that above the ladder match. Uh, but the the brawling brutes and mirror matches the first best match of the night. Um, anyway, if you liked what you saw here, 
I'm getting out of here for the rest of the night. If you like what you saw here, hit the like button, subscribe, comment down below, all that jazz, all the social media, at Miss for Russell TV. You can look for the the uh, Facebook page if you want. I don't really know if, if I still have it up. Oh, well, I've been Matt the Misfit. You are the Misfit Nation. I will, until, I will see you guys for Monday Night Raw. Until then, peace out. Peace out.